click the link in the description to download your own copy of this video's problem. Hey guys, Russ here, and welcome back to another fantastic chemistry video. And today, we're going to talk about drawing Lewis structures from a formula. Now, this one gives us one formula, but it wants two Lewis structures. Oh boy. Well, there's something in uh, chemistry called isomerism. And this is asking us essentially to draw isomers. We have the same formula, but we want two different structures that satisfy that formula. That's what it's asking us to do. All right, that's that's not hard. That's not hard. Um, more specifically, these are going to be these will be called constitutional isomers. By the way, structs uh, molecules that have the same chemical formula but differ in their carbon skeleton. More and more or less is what it means. Carbon, oxygen, oxygen, and four hydrogens. I like to draw them up. I like to draw them so that I know that they're there. And I'll tell you, as an organic chemistry professor, one of the more common things that I see students do incorrectly is they'll draw me a beautiful Lewis structure. Gorgeous. All the lone pairs are where they belong. All the octets are satisfied. And they'll have too many atoms or too few. They won't, they won't, they'll have answered a question that wasn't the one I asked them. They'll either, either have made their life easier by deleting atoms or harder by adding them. Either way, it's incorrect and they get zero for it. All right, so don't do that. Keep special care of your atoms. Make sure you have the right amount in your formula. Make sure everything has an octet. Make sure all the lone pairs are there. But make sure your Lewis structure satisfies your formula. Okay? Common rule of thumb in organic chemistry, if there's more than one carbon, you can bond them together. Um, you don't have to, but it's going to give you a, it's going to give you at least a good start, a good place to start from. Another common rule of thumb is use hydrogens last. Use all your atoms, other atoms first, and use hydrogens last. So in other words, we have four hydrogens here. We need to build a molecule here that has four single electrons. Okay, because every hydrogen needs one electron to bond to, so we need to have a formula here that has four single electrons. You'll see what I mean as I work through it. So I've used up the two carbons. Now I'm gonna put the oxygens on. Now, obviously I can do three things here. I can put the oxygens on the same carbon, I can put them on different carbons, or I can bond the oxygens to each other. Okay, those are my choices. Putting two oxygens together is called peroxide. It does happen. But I'm gonna put them both on the same molecule just to see what happens. There's one of my oxygens, and here's the other one. Notice how I'm leaving all the lone pairs and all the single electrons in. I'm just leaving them there, just leaving them there. This is, uh, there's another way to do this. It's called the electron counting method. You can just do it mathematically if you want. I prefer to draw it. That's all. So now I have four hydrogens left. So if I were to put those four hydrogens in this molecule right now, which I could do, you know what? Let's do it. Let's put a hydrogen here. Let's put a hydrogen here. Let's put a hydrogen here. And you know what? Let's put one here. Why not? Put them wherever you think they fit. That still doesn't satisfy the octet rule, right? Two, four, six, eight. That oxygen's good. Don't touch it. Two, four, six, eight. That carbon's good. Don't touch it. This carbon's not good. Two, four, six, seven. This oxygen's not good. Two, four, six, seven. Nice thing is, this carbon and that oxygen each have a single electron. Remember, one atom brings one electron, one atom brings another. They can make a chemical bond. All you need. And we've already seen multiple bonds. So this carbon and this oxygen can make a bond. Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. All my non-hydrogen atoms have octets. Two, 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 and two. All my hydrogens have octets. I need it to have two carbons, one, two, four hydrogens, one, two, three, four, and two oxygens, one, two. That formula fits. That formula fits. Fits my, this um, Lewis structure fits my molecular formula. Okay, that's great. Let's do another one. Now, remember, 
I put my hydrogens here and here. That's what I did. Didn't have to, though. Didn't have to. Could have done something else. I could have done this. Carbon to carbon. And then I could put my oxygens on like I did before. Oxygen. So let's put in some hydrogens. So here are my four hydrogens. Let's just shove them in there. Uh, before, I put three on this carbon and one on that oxygen. Let's not do that. Let's put hydrogens on both oxygens. Why not? So we have two more to deal with. Well, we could put both of them on here or one here and one there, right? Well, if we put, let me show you, this is, this is something that would be a mistake to do this. Let me show you what happens if you do it. Let's put them both here. Let's put them uh, one here and one here. That's nice. I mean, okay, fine. You can do that. But notice there's nowhere for these two, lone, these two single electrons to go. There's no way to satisfy the octet rule for that carbon now because this carbon has an octet, this oxygen has an octet, and so does that oxygen. They're not going to do any more bonding. Once they have an octet, they have an octet. Okay? So it would have been better, and in fact more correct, to do this. To leave that single electron here and put a hydrogen on here. Now we have adjacent atoms with single electrons. That can form a multiple bond. Whenever you have adjacent atoms with single electrons, they can form a bond. Two, four, six, eight. That carbon has an octet. Two, four, sorry, two, four, six, eight. Octet. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Everybody has an octet. And there's two Lewis structures you could have drawn for this molecule. These aren't the only two. In fact, I could fire a few for you right now. You could have done this. Uh, put an oxygen between the carbons. Put a carbonyl there and a hydrogen here. Some of you may have done this. And another one you could have done is uh, this one. Those also fit the, the uh, molecular formula. So there's numerous ones you could have drawn here. The question only asked for two. So I, I went through two in detail, but there are others you could have done. All right? All right, guys, if you found that video helpful, if you did, please go ahead and slap that like button. Leave a comment below. Let me know how I can help you out in your particular chemistry class. Maybe I can make a video just for you. And please, if you would, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It really does help all YouTube creators out when you guys subscribe to our stuff. It lets YouTube know that we're being helpful and that you guys enjoy our content. And maybe they'll recommend us more to other students to help them out. Now, with that, guys, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon. Email drbets at protonmail.com if you would like a copy of every problem in this series.